We've made several videos where we talk about all of the different reasons why ball python breeders get out of the reptile breeding hop. And for this week, we are going to be talking about some of the harsh truths. We are going to be talking about the challenges. We are going to be talking about seven different mistakes. But if right now you are in a situation where it feels like that you are having one tragedy after another, that you can never catch a break, that you are overextended, that you don't have enough time in the day just to care for the animals, and on top of the lack of time, Time, that the financial requirements needed to care for all of the different snakes that you have are starting to put a strain on yourself and your family, you might be considering whether or not right now is it and if you should get out of the reptile breeding hobby altogether. And for this week's video, we're not necessarily going to try to convince people not to get out of the reptile breeding hobby, but instead what we want to do is we want to talk about some different techniques, some different strategies that you could use if you're feeling like this right now in order to reignite the passion that you once had for breeding reptiles. So that way, maybe three, five, ten years down the road, not only are you out in a stronger position than where you are right now, but you are a better keeper, you are a better better breeder and overall probably just a better person than had you not gone through the adversity and hardship that you are experiencing right now. So my name's Steven with Leviathan Snakes and let's get in it. Quick interjection before we get into the meat of the video, and that is we are nearing 5,000 subscribers on YouTube and we are so freaking excited. Thank you all so much for watching our videos, for leaving comments every single week, and just showing all of the support that you have shown Courtney and I throughout all of our time in the reptile breeding hobby. Now, to celebrate, we are gonna be doing a giveaway with Rare Genetics Incorporated that we are gonna discuss in more detail later on in this video. But there are two things that you'll need to do if you wanna be entered in the giveaway. So the very first one is make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you're already subscribed, don't even worry about it. And if you're not subscribed, just hit the subscribe button. But we're gonna talk about the second half of it on how you can be entered into this giveaway between Leviathan Snakes and Rare Genetics Incorporated. And we are so freaking excited. But like I said, back to the video. Again, this isn't a video trying to talk about all of the different reasons why people get out, but I do think it's important to kind of hit on some of the emotional feelings that are going on right now that you might be experiencing, so that way we can discuss ways and strategies and tactics that you can use to try to alleviate these negative emotions, these negative mindsets. For self-doubt. Self-doubt, in my mind, is when somebody thinks that they may not have what it takes in order to be a successful reptile breeder. And realistically, and this is in lots of different videos, this isn't new from us or anything, but success can be defined by whatever it is that you want. But if you are in the situation where you're considering getting out because you don't think you have what it takes, likely the reason why you feel like you don't have what it takes is that you are looking at everybody else in the reptile hobby and because you're looking at pretty much what people are showing on social media which is like the highlight reel it feels like that everybody is passing you by and everybody is doing so much better than you and that they seem to have time that you don't know where they get it from in order to market themselves on YouTube or on Instagram and that they're vending all of these different shows and that they're buying these amazing snakes and it's just not something that feels like it's in the cards for you and in this specific situation what it kind of does is it makes it seem like that if you are so far away from all of these other people that you are seeing, what's the point? And if you can't get up to that point, why even breed reptiles? So first thing that I want to talk about on this point is you're not alone. These feelings of inadequacy, self-doubt, all of that stuff, it's very, very common and a lot of people are in this situation because you can look at the people who are leading the entire industry. And while we are seeing the absolutely incredible animals they are producing, the amazing sales that they are making, all of these different things, they've been doing it for significantly longer than I have, than Courtney has, than pretty much almost everybody who's watching this channel. And it's not really fair to ourselves if we are comparing ourselves against somebody who's been doing it for 20, 15, 10 years even, in expecting ourselves to be at the exact same level. So one thing that I think is really, really good about the reptile
Reptile Hobby is that you really can make it anything that you want. If you just wanna have a handful of clutches a year just to make some cool animals that you've seen on YouTube and sell them at local shows, that is 100% a successful way to go about the reptile breeding hobby. And if you wanna make it an entire business empire where you are able to support yourself, your family, and have employees, that is also a completely legitimate way to go about things. But you don't have to have it where it is a full-on business in order for it to be successful. Realistically, this is a hobby and personal enjoyment is 100% a way to be successful in this hobby. And as long as you are enjoying the animals that you are caring for and you're enjoying hatching out the babies, I think that for the most part, you'll be good to go. All that said, while it might be true in that it isn't required to keep up with anybody else in the hobby in order for it to be successful, that doesn't necessarily mean that that you won't feel inadequate compared to other people in the hobby. So, in this situation, you might be looking at it that you didn't buy the right animals or that you don't have a strong base in your ball python breeding projects. And because of that, you are going to have to redo everything by all new animals and you might end up messing up again. And again, that self-doubt just comes back where you aren't necessarily believing in your own abilities and your own knowledge. But in this specific situation, when it comes to animals, when most people are getting into the ball python breeding hobby, they're very impulsive with what they're buying. They're they're buying things that look amazing but might not really fit together and if you went into a brand new ball python breeding operation right now with the knowledge that you have now you probably are going to be able to pick better animals pick better projects and overall set yourself up stronger than when you very first got in and had no idea about all of these different aspects of the ball python breeding market so while it might be scary to do an entire reset it might be the thing that a allows you to move out of the animals that don't really fit into your projects and focus in on only the things that you are really, really passionate about. And subsequently, once you end up having those offspring, you will be in a far better position because you're not gonna be stretched too thin and you're not gonna be overextended. And we're gonna get into all of those different aspects later on in this video. Tying into the self-doubt, it is not uncommon for people to be breeding for three, four, five, even 10 years and ultimately feel like that they are not really making progress in the entire ball python breeding hobby. And when this is happening, it might feel like that you are treading water or maybe each season you're getting a little bit further and further and further behind. And as that's happening and new people get into the hobby, it can be really, really discouraging when they are just going out and buying the animal that you've been trying to hit for years and years and years, but the odds just keep crushing you. And it can ultimately just put you in a situation where the goal animal you've been trying to hit forever just isn't worth what it it used to be and it doesn't feel like it's even worth it to keep pursuing it and because of all of this it might lead to somebody wanting to get out. Rather than trying to focus on creating a specific combo when the situation is arising, I personally think it might be helpful to instead focus on saving up enough money so that way you can go out and buy something that is way beyond anything you could potentially create from the animals that you already have. So let's say that you're in a situation where if you are breeding $1,000 animals, maybe you try to save up to get a $5,000 animal or a $10,000 animal, 15 or even 20000 thousand dollar animal it just really depends on your situation but the thing on this is it's not about a specific animal instead you are rather than focusing on just getting another clutch to try to hit that specific combo you are instead trying to sell animals whether they're hatchlings or animals that don't really fit into your projects anymore and take that money and put it into an account and don't spend it and then you keep putting more and more money so that way the sense of progress that you're getting is not getting a clutch and then once the clutch hatches out losing on the odds again instead it is the steady progress from having a thousand dollars in the account to fifteen hundred to two thousand to twenty five hundred to three thousand until eventually you hit your goal and then once you do hit that budgetary goal that you wanted I think you could go on morph market and just go buy maybe like the best male that still fits into your project given that price range but I personally think that it might be a little bit better to wait until 
there is the next national level show, wherever it's close to your app. Maybe it's a Tinley or something like this. And rather than just going and buying a specific animal on Morph Market, which you could still do, taking that money that you saved up, going to that Tinley, maybe it's a fall Tinley or March Tinley or Daytona or something like this, and going around the entire show and really analyzing what is available, what is within your price range, and what would work best for you. Because while you could just go onto Morph Market and buy that specific animal, you might still end up doing that because if you go to the show and you end up finding out that like, yeah, there's nothing that really fits into your situation, you can always go to Morph Market and buy the, what Whatever animal you are looking at. But at that in-person show, you will likely be able to get a far better deal on the animal. You'll be able to see them in person and you are going to be able to network with other people in the hobby, specifically within that project, which becomes so important and so valuable once you end up having those babies for sale. So I personally think that doing this in person, especially if you've saved up five, 10, 15, $20,000 will result in so many other benefits that you never would have even had the chance to experience if you had just bought the animal online. And I think that forming those relationships, forming those connections and having that experience, the memory of buying that specific animal at that specific show, I think all of these things are really, really valuable, especially on a psychological level when you are trying to make sure that you capture that passion because it is going to keep giving you something else to look forward to along the way. On the business side, it might feel like that you are struggling to sell your animals, that nobody really wants them, and when they do want them, they're kind of flaky, maybe they're tire kickers, anything like this, and again, it just is a very, very difficult to sell the offspring that you have. So there's lots of different kind of nuances to this, but on a general overview level, what I would say is I would try to focus on some really, really core marketing concepts. And the very first one is brand awareness. And this would be taking deliberate efforts to put your brand in front of people who've never heard of you before. And that's the key there is people who've never heard of you before. If you are just posting stuff on Instagram, most likely the only people who are going to see that are the people who are already following you. So rather than just posting stuff on Instagram, going out and commenting on new peoples that you've never interacted acted with before, their posts, their page, sending them DMs, all of those different things, I think that that's going to end up resulting in far better results for you than just simply posting stuff to the people who already know about you and already know about your animals. Beyond the awareness phase, I personally think that it is really, really important to build those relationships with the people who do know about you. And when I say build relationships, I don't mean put up a post saying, hey, buy my snake. What instead I mean is start up conversations, build friendships with them, because when it comes time for you to have to sell the animals that you have, or just simply have somebody to talk to because the things can get really, really hard and really, really difficult in the reptile hobby, you have built up those friendships. You've built up those those relationships with other people in the community and they will not allow you to give up on everything you've worked for because they're going to be there to support you. Last quick tip on the business side of things is that Morph Market has recently released auctions and we're not sponsored by Morph Market in any way. But I personally think that these are really, really awesome tools, especially for people who are struggling to sell their animals and they just need to move stuff out in order to have less mouths to feed. There is absolutely nothing wrong with taking an animal that hasn't gotten a lot of interest, putting it up on an auction with no reserve, and then allowing the market to dictate what is the actual value for that animal right then and there. And even if it sells for less than what you wanted it to sell for, it is still ultimately going to be a good positive thing for you because it is bringing in some revenue for your business. And in addition, it is minimizing your expenses because that's one less mouth to feed. So I think that if you want something pretty quick, I would highly recommend using Morph Market's auction feature and not setting a reserve price. So that way you can truly allow the market to dictate what that animal is worth. In addition to all of the results and whether or not somebody's getting what they want out of the breeding hobby, there is so much work that is required in order to breed ball pythons, in order to care for the animals, and in order to run a ball python breeding business successfully that it very, very easily can lead to burnout. 
And realistically, at least in my opinion, when I think of burnout, that is when you feel like you have a million different tasks that you need to do and you do not have the time for it. And in this situation, it can be really, really demoralizing. And what ends up happening is if the burnout gets too bad, you end up having no motivation to do anything and then things start to really, really go south. And when this ends up happening, this is when you can get a lot of tragedy that we are gonna be talking about later on. So in order to combat the burnout is when somebody is feeling the burnout, the initial stages, because you feel it way before it gets too bad where you end up just giving up on everything. I personally think it would be very, very smart to take a step back, just take a break. It doesn't mean don't do anything with the animals, but stop overexerting yourself. And in this situation, I think that you should really, really identify what is the absolute bare essentials that you need to do and then cut out everything extra and do this just do the bare essentials if you need to take a step back from social media that is perfectly okay there is no reason at all for somebody to have to go at 110 percent sprint every single second of every single day for years and years and years i don't even think that that's sustainable anyways but when you get into the situation, I think pairing it back to what's essential, like caring for the animals, setting up one day a week where you're gonna go through and you are going to humidify, do water changes, you're gonna do all of the husbandry stuff that you need to do with the animals to make sure that they are healthy and safe. I think that once you establish this habit where you are specifically only doing what you absolutely have to do, eventually the burnout will subside. Like it comes in waves, I feel like, with most people. And while you might have a very, very busy time of the year, a couple months later, things might have calmed down enough where you might be able to add back in posting on social media. And maybe it's not every single day, maybe it's once a week. But just simply understanding what you absolutely need to do and giving yourself permission to not allow things to get too bad where you end up dropping all of your responsibilities, but rather that you take the time for yourself to refocus, relax, and get back into a good headspace. I think that this is essential in order to battle burnout. The next one kind of ties in with burnout and that is overextension. And while there is overextension in your time effort, specifically for this one, I wanna talk about financially overextending yourself. So it is very, very common when people get into the ball python breeding hobby and they're so excited and they're so passionate that they buy a ton of animals, they buy a ton of equipment, and they end up spending money that they don't really have. They take out credit cards, they do various different things in order to purchase all of the stuff based off of YouTube videos that they've seen and ultimately what can happen is that maybe they don't sell the animals that they thought they were going to sell or they don't sell for the prices that they thought they were going to sell for and they are stuck with these massive credit card debts and that the interest, once it kicks in, because a lot of times it's like 0% interest for a certain amount of time, but once that interest kicks in, it can absolutely crush people. So my advice, if you financially overextended yourself, is to make a budget where one side is how much money you are consistently bringing in every single month. And when I say consistently, I don't mean you have a clutch that is due to hatch two months from now. So when that happens, you should have this amount of money. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is how much money are you getting from your paychecks every single month? And once you have that fixed kind of income established, next we wanna look at your financial expenses. And we want to identify the stuff that you absolutely have to do. So this could be like your rent and mortgage, electricity, things like that. That's one category. There's nothing you can really do about those. Then we want to identify all of the things that if you wanted to, if you really wanted to buckle down, you could cancel right now and you could save that amount of money every single month. That'd be things like Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that. And then lastly, we want to put a list of every single one of your debts ordered by the one that has the lowest total balance up to the one with the highest total balance. And what we ultimately want to do is essentially we want to pay the minimum amount on every single one of the other debts except for the one with the lowest total balance. And the reason why is we want to really focus on the one with the lowest total balance and knock that one out. So maybe we're gonna cut out Netflix, maybe we're gonna cut out Hulu, and we're going to up our monthly payments on that lowest one by $300. And if you do this, 
in maybe four months, you'll have that one completely paid off. So then you go to the next one with the next lowest balance and you take all of the money you were paying on that first debt and you roll it into the payment on the second one. And you keep doing this until you end up knocking down a lot of different debts. And I know 100% that anybody who is really, really financially savvy looks at this and be like, that's stupid and you shouldn't do that. You should focus on the ones with the highest interest rate first. So that way you are paying the smallest amount of time and interest over a long period of time and I 100% agree with you. But in this specific situation, if somebody has financially overextended themselves, realistically, they need to improve their monthly cash flow so that way they are not feeling like they are being crushed by their bills every single month first. And then later on, they can, once they have more breathing room, identify which ones have the highest interest rate and knock those ones out. Cutting into the video real quick to talk about our 5,000 follower giveaway. So this giveaway and our entire channel is sponsored by our amazing friends over at Rare Genetics Incorporated. And what they are doing is that they are going to be giving away some of their two day fast shed tests and the two day fast shed tests actually have just been expanded. So previously you could send in a shed test for clown, for VPI Exanthic or for Desert Ghost and they would give you the results as soon as they got the shed tests in the mail within two business days. So the new morphs that they just added to the two day fast shed tests are Sunset, Puzzle and Pied. And I think this is absolutely freaking huge. We obviously absolutely love the Sunset Project and we are just now really starting to get into the Puzzle Project too. And the fact that we can send in a puzzle shed to RGI and get the results back in two business days is absolutely huge. So all of that said, for the giveaway, what we are going to be doing is that if right now you go down and comment, you gotta be following the channel, but if you comment two day shed tests with RGI, you will be entered into the drawing for this week. So we're gonna be giving away three different shed tests for the next couple of weeks. And what will end up happening is that next week's video, we're gonna go through and we are going to randomly pick somebody who is commented on this specific video, the two day shed tests with RGI. And once we see that they are following us, we will announce it on next week's video. So on next week's video, whoever ends up winning, what you'll have to do is you will have to claim it by just commenting like, yeah, I won from the exact same account that you commented on. So just in case anybody leaves any comments on this specific video saying that you've won, that's not true and that's a scam. It was going to be announced through next week's video. These last two things that we're gonna talk about are a little bit more difficult because there isn't really anything that you can quite do about them. But that said, we are gonna talk about some strategies to cope with them, even though there isn't necessarily anything to do once it actually happens. The very first one is that you may have experienced some form of animal tragedy. Maybe you had a rack fire or you had a disease sweep through your collection and kill a ton of animals. And in these situations, it can be really, really hard to want to keep going because all of the money that you had invested, all of the emotional connections you had made to those animals, all of the work you had put in for years and years and years in a blink of an eye can just be gone. And that can be genuinely devastating and I don't blame anybody who gets out after an experience like that. That said, if you want to stay in, I think that taking that specific experience, whether it was a rack fire or disease or anything else, and using it to become a better keeper, using it to become a better breeder, and ultimately growing as an individual is going to be critical. Because if you have an experience that has Nido wipe out your entire collection, maybe in the future when you stay in and you get new animals, you are testing every single one of those animals that you get before you bring them into your collection. So even though those tragedies can be absolutely devastating, they can be terrible, I do think it is very possible to come out of those tragedies even better than what you were beforehand. The last thing that I wanna talk about is personal tragedy. And this is, in my opinion, probably the hardest to come back from. 
and that is if you've had the loss of a loved one, if you've had a life-altering injury, if you've had a divorce, even if you've just simply lost a job that you 100% needed in order to survive, all of these things can absolutely wreck your motivation in order to want to continue breeding ball pythons. And I don't think anybody in the entire community would blame anyone who got out after one of these specific situations. That said, again, this whole video is focused on the people who don't want to get out. So what I would say in this specific situation is, while it's very likely that you might be grieving or you've had your entire life plan shattered right in front of your eyes, this community, at least in the people that I've interacted with, is genuinely the best community I have ever been a part of. And there are so many people in this community who will just simply be willing to listen to you so that way you can vent and deal with all of the negative things that are going on right now. And if you have to walk away from the ball python breeding hobby, that is okay. And there is nobody who is going to blame you for it. And just because you might decide that you need to step away right now doesn't mean that three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you can't come back. And by building up these strong relationships within the community, I think that when you do decide to come back, everybody is going to be welcoming you with open arms. And again, just in case anybody is going through anything that is just really, really hard, you just need somebody to talk to, send us a message on Instagram. We definitely, 100%, we might not know exactly what to say, but we will definitely talk with you, even if it's just trying to get your mind off of stuff by talking about snakes. So I know that this video was much, much more negative, much more, I don't know, depressing than almost all of the other videos I'm pretty sure we've ever recorded, but I do think that it's useful for some people that are going through a really, really rough time. So we hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time.